Today we head to the Bark Eater Chocolate Factory and Shop. The building itself was built around 1880 and was home to several generations of one family since 1947, until it was purchased in 2013 by Bark Eater Chocolates. It is said that the home is haunted by at least one family of the many generations that resided here. It is believed that one of the children died outside the home in a tragic accident. It is also confirmed that the parents of the young child passed away in two different rooms of the house. Those are just the ones we know about. If you consider the many generations over 60 years that have lived here, it could only be assumed there could have been much, much more. Hi, I'm Deborah. I am the founder of Casco Mountain Paranormal. I have Sandy with me. I'm a team member of Casco Mountain Paranormal. I've been with the team for a year. Hi, my name's John uh, from Mountaintop Paranormal. We're up here at Bark Eater's Chocolate Factory and we had a lucky opportunity to collaborate with Casco Mountain Paranormal and get this amazing place to investigate. So um, from that going forward, enjoy the show. So far, every employee and contracting crew have experienced some sort of unexplained experiences. From footsteps, voices, loud bangs, items being thrown from the shelves, and even coming in every morning to the thermostat being turned all the way up to the point where they had to tape it shut. All right, so um, when did you first uh, obtain the building? Uh, we bought this building in 2013, March of 2013. Okay, and how long did it take for you to realize that there was something going on? About a week. About <laughs> yeah. a week? Yes, yeah, it happened pretty quickly, uh, shortly after moving in. Oh, what happened? Uh, when I was sitting in what used to be our office, which is downstairs, with this room right over here was the office, I was sitting there and I got here particularly early one morning, and uh, I was alone in the building, and as I was sitting there at my computer. I heard the front door open, and um, it squeaks, and you can you can hear it now how it squeaks. I heard the front door open. I heard footsteps heading that way, and then I heard banging, which is not unusual because when our chocolatier gets here, and our chocolatier does get here very very early in the morning, um, it is not unusual to hear a lot of banging because that's how we break apart the big hunks of chocolate so we can put it in our machines. Right. Make them smaller. Um, the problem was is that she did not stop and say hi. So after about five minutes, I got up and I came out to the front door and realized the building was still dark. And I looked out the window and saw that her car was in the parking lot. So I stood here for a few minutes, um, staring, kind of dumbfounded, wondering what I had just experienced. And she pulled in. And then when she came in, I explained to her that I thought she was already here and I wanted to know if she had left. She said she had just arrived. And when I explained the door opening, the footsteps, and the banging, her only response was, well, now you've heard it too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing like when you were like in the market for the place or went to go buy it, no, no warnings, no nothing. In fact, the man we, well, the family we purchased from raised their kids here and he, uh, the father of the uh, family, uh, was raised here himself. Oh, wow. Like. So, um, but the house goes way back before that. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else interesting? Uh, we've had heat fluctuations in various parts of the building where it'll be, the thermostat will be turned up. It's not programmable, it's not digital, but the dial will be turned up when we come in in the morning. Um, oh. We ended up having to tape some of those dials down so they don't move. We've had people, people staff in experience um, cold and hot at the, you know, at the same time, actually, simultaneously, right. almost like air in their face. 
Um, and we've had some product go flying off the shelves. Nice. And we're not the only ones that have experienced it. Uh, construction workers here uh, mm -hmm. five years ago also experienced footsteps in what they thought was me walking and talking upstairs. Uh, so our office moved upstairs. Um, mm -hmm. Thinking it was me here the whole time in a similar situation that had happened to me happened to them and that I walked in and they realized I hadn't been here the whole time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Does it bother you at all, or you're pretty no. comfortable with it now? No, we're totally yeah. fine. It makes a great scapegoat. Yeah. When things go wrong, when we screw up, it's always <laughs> the ghost's fault. Um, but no, completely at ease. You don't even realize anything's yeah. weird anymore. But as people come and go, employees come and go, and they right. will have their own experiences when of they course. come, and different feelings and different sensations that... Um, that they experience all on their own. Yeah. And we've had customers come in who knew the family who lived here before, who had spent time here, also corroborate their own stories that they swear it's haunted as well. Oh wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Any any particular spot that you know we is um where you would like point us towards, you know? I would just say if you concentrate on this part, because this is the original part of the old house. Okay. So the family that moved in here, the one I referred to before, um, where he was raised as a child and later raised kids, they started here in 1947. They built on a lot of additions. So the primary concentration is in this store area. That room right there was also part of the original house. Um, and of course we hear things, we've heard things upstairs, all part of the original house. Right. So I would say yes, but not in one particular spot. Right, okay. Yeah. All right, well thank you very much. You're and welcome. we appreciate the opportunity. It's been great. Great, right. awesome. Look forward to it. Is there anyone over here? I can talk right, I can talk right into this device in my hand and it'll hear you. <laughs> Nothing to be afraid of. What's your name? Okay, can you one cross them for me? Mm, I want to ask you another question, so the only way I can do that is if you one cross them. Did you used to live here? Cross them if you did. Yep. Okay, can you open them up again for me? It was nice talking to you. All right, goodbye and we'll talk soon, okay? Cross to say goodbye. I just see the light go. That's something else. If there's anyone in here, you know, feel free to light up this gadget in my hand and you'll just tell me of your presence. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're here just to communicate and hear your story. And you like to sit in this rocking chair and make that light up. Missing some steps, but you can certainly check it out. I'll turn it's my accessible. Right.
He's an don't like anybody coming He's an acrobatic yeah. person. Trust me, I worked here and I've been around this place for a long time. I've never been in a basement. I have. I never. And I won't show you. I won't. I refuse. <laughs> Just see if we get any readings. Oh, that's like. That's the that beginning, yeah. No, that's from the door. Yeah. That's from the door. There's something there. That's why I'm There's something there. That's why I'm. Only when it definitely wanted. wasn't me, otherwise it'd be going on. No, only when it wants to be shown or heard. They can be struggling. That was, that was, that was, was you. That was you. Who's down in the basement? All right. Are you coming up the stairs? What's your name? You like it down in the basement? Why do you stay in the basement? Who is down there with the basement with you? Could you make my little black box go off again to show us that you're here? Is the basement comfortable for you? How many spirits are down in the basement? You getting anything on that? Mm -mm. No. Would you mind if I took a trip down the okay. stairs? Don't trip. I'll be, I'll be sure. I'll be sure. I'll be sure. We've all warned you. Yeah. You're below the steps. No. You got me on camera. Yeah. Say? Yep, yeah, that's why I want to check that out. You got me on camera saying I don't hold you liable. He's right. <laughs> State your name. And this is about the same. Uh, John Abate. Okay. And this is about the same as this. I shouldn't do that. Um, except it reads out exact numbers. So. Anything over four and it goes red, they're there. You're not even setting that off, so it was not you. <laughs> nope. John is coming down to say hello to you. Is there anyone down here with me? Can you come and touch this meter in my hand, this little green light? Or you can speak into my phone and I'll hear it later. What's your favorite spot? I think I found it. Is it up there? Did it touch the ball? Yep. Yep. Touch the balls again. Play with the balls. Roll the balls. Okay. I'm going to leave this one sitting here. If it hits that point where the alarm's going to go off, then we'll know it's down here. Right there for now. Play with the ball. Show the pretty colors again. I left my e I left my EMF meter on the third step, so if it goes to a certain level, it'll go off. It's not me. 
Cause... No, that's not you. Can you yeah. tell us how old you are? Are you from the family that previous lived here? That just moved off the table. Yes, we're getting some activity here. Yep. That boo bear, we spent three hours at the cemetery the other night, got incredible activity, but that bear didn't go off once. So that bear is going off now and it, that takes a lot of energy to yeah. make that go Like off. a child almost. <laughs> a very mischievous child. Mm -hmm. So if you're a child, why don't you play with the balls then too? Make them go off. Different colors. Roll them. Play with them. Can you set this little black box off too in front of me? Can you turn the light on blue? Can you make anything here on the table go off? Don't be shy. Don't be stubborn. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That, that just went off. Yeah. Where do you have that set up? I have it over there on the shelf. What's your name? And that's going off. Are you a... Are you a male? And this just came back on by itself. Are you a child or an adult? If you're a child, let the red go off on the bear again. That was me. That's him. Mm -hmm. And it is. I have to debunk that one. But that's not. It's still going though. Yeah. It's still going. And the bear is going. So it's a child. Are you a male child? Can you make this blank blue in front of me? Are you a female child? Can you use anything on the table to let us know you're here? Refrigerators can make horrible noises. <laughs> you think there would be a demon in the back of the refrigerators, <laughs> the noises they make? Oh my God. We're listening. Maybe you ask a question. Yes. Anything you want to know about them? Did you used to live here? She says, I still live here. <laughs>
There's nothing to be afraid of. Have you been here a long time?
What you hear? Yes. <laughs> What do you do when you, what do you do when you, do you like being heard after all these years? Can you tell me the lady's name who owns the place? <laughs> Couldn't make that one out. Is she a nice lady? I think so. She led us here to talk to you. Who 
was in the rocks, was it? Was it? That wasn't you. No. Because you're right in the view with that. Hi, Douglas. Glad you could make it. You want to take a walk around and see if you can feel anything? Because we're getting a um, mail. Um, Male spirit and um, I it for my mother's real name. What was it? Like it for last time, mother's real name. Mm -hmm. You said your name was Kayla or Kayla Ann, right? Do you want to stand near the basement and see if you get home? Oh, no. That wasn't you. I know, I walked by there. Female but... prison is there. That's what's going off. So that's the girl? Yes. That's the girl. <laughs> She's not sure either. No. All people. Over 18, that's what they gave us when we did the dousing rods, and I had asked them. And low ceilings in the house, go figure. They all had the duck, because it would keep the heat in, in the house and stuff. Yeah, you know, notice how it got stronger when I finally went over to the basement. So that's their spot of, like, leash. It's his spot. His spot, yeah. But she didn't speak until we asked him if she can. Mm -hmm. That was, long. yeah. Right. Uh, especially in olden times, that was... Mm -hmm. Respectful. Mm -hmm. They always had a hold mm -hmm. over him. Yeah. He's still here. Can you come up and touch this in my hand if you're still here, any of you? Can the girl light up the teddy bear? Is it lighting? It's lighting, but it has to blink, but they're trying. Trying to light it up. Did you want to walk around, Douglas, and see if you feel anything? Walk where? Like right through there, and there's another room in there. Um, Deb, the owner here, said that they've been um, throwing um, packages of candy off the shelves. Mm -hmm. In here. Mm -hmm. It's on his side when it rains. Oh, she's. Yeah. I feel like I just turned my head and seen it. Me too. Wow, that's right. I was like, where are they going? <laughs> As soon as the start of the rain came. Yep. Yes, it's more um, active in here. Right yeah, now. there it goes. The rain. As soon as you put your camera on it, it goes off. There it goes again. The boo bear is trying to light up too. <laughs> Now it's not. It wasn't. Okay, so point it up. Um, 
And if you ever see him on this. He's being filmed right now. He's tired. Is it cool in the basement? What do you do down there in that basement? Are you working down there? Is there anything else that you would like to tell us?
Thank you for your time and take care of this good weather. I'll be there again. Protect the house now. German. This is a German area. And okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah. you for protecting the house. Thanks. Over the last couple of years, I've done upwards of about 100 small to large investigations, and most have a mixture of both negative and positive energies, some leaning in one direction more than the other at times. But here at Bark Eaters, I didn't feel anything negative, in fact quite the opposite. If anything, I felt like they had a sense of pride while still residing there, and a feeling of protection for the staff. If I were to conclude anything from this experience, I would say the spirits and energies are happy with the way the place is cared for. If you were ever near the Lake George Adirondack area, be sure to visit this amazing place with its amazing owners and staff. If not for the spirits, then most definitely for the chocolate.